In this tutorial we're going to take a look at how the Handlebars templating engine works with Express.js. So in the previous lesson we looked at some of the features that you can use with the embedded JavaScript templating engine to create dynamic pages based on some of the data that's passed in and rendered to the view. But we finished up by saying that there are other templating engines including Handlebars which does afford a lot more customization for you if you want to create some more intricate or complicated templates. So I'm going to replicate the existing project that we created with our embedded JavaScript in the previous tutorial, but this time when I create a brand new Express project using the Express Generator, I'm just going to specify Handlebars as the templating engine, and we do that with dash dash HBS. So just passing in that option for Handlebars will configure our Express project to use the Handlebars templating engine. So I'm just going to so I'm just going to go ahead and so I'm just going to so I'm just going to go ahead and install the dependencies for the project and create the route that we had in the previous lesson. So here we are in the index module of our routes folder, and you can see I've got all of the same data that I had in the previous example. We have a string called title that has some HTML tags in it already, a boolean value of show title, and some and some strings saved in a property called data. I've also created a handlebars templating folder just called HBS example, which is the template that will get rendered on that route. So let's just start off by rendering the title to the page. And in handlebars, instead of using the less than and percent sign, we actually use a double set of opening and closing curly braces. So I can literally just put the variable name inside of there that's passed to the view. And if we run this new express project and take a look in the browser, if we browse to that new HBS route, you can see the string is being rendered to the template, but the same thing is happening as with EJS. In that, we're getting the literal string, but the actual HTML tags are being escaped. So if we actually want to parse those HTML tags, we can put an extra set of curly braces around the variable name. So if we return to the page and refresh it, you'll see the HTML tags are no longer being escaped, and we can see the formatting for the heading level 1 tag. So the next thing we did in the EJS example was to conditionally show the title based on the boolean value that's stored in the show title property that's passed to the view. So this is how it looks with handlebars. You simply wrap the code that you want to display in the variable name with a hash and a slash to open and close the if statement. So if show title is truthy, the title will be rendered, but if it isn't, then nothing will actually happen. So in our EJS example, we did have an else statement in there as well. So if we want to do that with handlebars, we'd need to just make a small change to what we've got already. So as you can see, we need to put the if keyword at the top of our handlebar statement. And instead of closing with show title, we actually need to have forward slash if, just to make sure that if is then closed. So as show title is currently falsy, if we return to the browser, we should see the else statement being rendered. So the last thing we did in our EJS template was to loop through the data property and display the list of fruits. So let's have a look at how we would do that with handlebars. So to create our loop, we open our handlebar statement with a hash each. And then when we're ready to finish our loop, we close it with a slash each. And data, don't forget, is the property that was set up in the root, which is passing the array of strings to the view. And to access each of those strings on each iteration, we just use the this keyword, which is just used to refer to the current value. If the array contained objects, we could actually reference the property names of those objects. But as these are literal strings, we can just use this to add them inside of our HTML tags. So let's return to the browser one last time to check that out. And as you can see, as before, the loop continues and prints out all of those strings into the list. So we've gone through some of the basic things that you'd want to do with handlebars templates and match them back to what we did with the EJS templating engine. So having seen the two styles, it's really up to you to decide which one you prefer and which one you'd like to go with when you're setting up a new project. There are quite a lot of other customizations that you can do with handlebars templates, which we haven't covered in this video. But if you do like the style of the handlebars templates, maybe check out those customizations so you can create more complex templates.